Good evening. The bottom line tonight is that West Australians are facing a home budget hit and the Barnett government has racked up a mountain of debt. Next year alone, WA faces a budget blowout of $2.7 billion, the worst deficit in our history. That's just over $1,000 for every man, woman and child in the state. And that's just the start. The Barnett government is forecasting that will be $36 billion in debt by 2018. And home budgets are on the way up too. Power, water, public transport and car registration are rising, on average costing an extra $198 this year. On top of that, there's a hit of $99 for every car in WA to cover the cost of no-fault insurance. Josh Yoger has the details. With the worst set of books in 15 years, the Treasurer's job was to spread the pain. We are not going to slash and burn. This is not the time for harsh financial measures. Mike Nahan's dealing with a disastrous deficit of $2.7 billion. Debt isn't much better, blowing out to $31 billion, peaking at 36 in three years' time. Our debt will exceed $36 billion. When Mr Barnett came to office, it was $3 billion. This guy has been a financial catastrophe for this state. The Treasurer says this isn't the time to hit families, but power's up, an extra $65 for an average household. Water's up, an extra $66 a year. Public transport will cost $20 more. It seems the budget is more about lanes, lines and signs. Car registration and licences rise by $21, all up. The average family is $200 out of pocket. It's a bad budget. It's one that doesn't fix the fundamental problems in our economy. But that doesn't include $99 per car for no-fault insurance for catastrophic injuries. It's been on the cards for months following the tragic case of Warwick Proudlove. From July next year, it will cover everyone who's permanently disabled in a crash. If this can help some other family going through what we've gone through, then it's a good thing. There's bad news for people with investment properties. For the first time, land tax will hit properties worth between $300,000 and $420,000. For properties over $500,000, it jumps from $200 to $500. Those costs will ultimately be passed on through residential rents, commercial rents and to small business. First home buyers grant has been scrapped on established properties. But there's still $10,000 for those who build a new home. Our focus is uh, in giving incentives for housing to, for people to build new homes. Concessions are facing an overhaul. The energy assistance payment will be means tested. You'll have to be over 65 with a Commonwealth Seniors Health Card to get it. For the first time, rebates will be capped. Local government rates at $550, water rebates at $600. Could have raised taxes more. We could have cut expenditure more rap more ferociously. But seniors will get free late night travel between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. Anyone working or visiting Royal Perth Hospital or Sir Charles Gardner Hospital will be hit with a 7% rise in parking fees. A razor will be put through public sector spending with expenditure growth kept at just 2.5%. There'll be no major pay rises for anyone and if a public servant leaves, they'll be replaced with someone on a cheaper salary. This budget is about cuts, more cuts and more cuts. Cuts to schools in Western Australia. With no new major projects, spending is tight. The government will spend $1.2 billion on the next generation of trains. 300 high-tech rail cars, but the money won't start flowing until 2019. $35 million will be spent on upgrading escalators at Perth Underground train station and the Esplanade, as well as reinforcing our rail network to stop any more fallen wires. Josh Yerger, 9 News.